Welcome to the My Personal Football Coach Youth Soccer Player Development Podcast, episode 41 with Marco Sidrich. Welcome to MyPersonalFootballCoach.com's Soccer Player Development Podcast. Discover all the secrets, hints and tips about soccer player development and soccer coaching from some of the leading figures in world soccer. Here's your host, Saul Isaacson Hurst. Hi guys, welcome back to another show. Uh, this week we've got a fantastic guest. It's Marco Sindrich. Marco's the uh, U9 head coach at uh, the world famous Dynamo Zagreb Academy in Croatia. Uh, Dynamo Zagreb is consistently at the top of the league tables in terms of producing uh, professional footballers for the top leagues in Europe. A fantastic record of uh, developing players including Luka Modric and many, many more. So uh, Marco really gives us a uh, fantastic insight into what goes on at one of the best academies in world football and particularly in the younger age group. So working with the nines and also he works with the 11. So real in-depth understanding about uh, what goes on there. And look, uh, you know, uh, you might have seen the Inside the Academy, uh, Dynamo Zagreb special, uh, ball mastery and 1v1 really is at the heart of the academy here. So great to hear that. This is the sort of work's going on at Dynamo Zagreb, uh, amongst many other academies. So this is a fantastic show. Uh, it got so much knowledge and insight to share. It's great to see what goes on at, at the top academies uh, in world football. So uh, this is one that I'm sure you're going to enjoy. Uh, remember, if you are enjoying these shows, please do leave a re- review. It really does help more than you can know. Really do appreciate it. Uh, lots going on my end. Just got back from Los Angeles. Uh, really proud to work with LA Galaxy. Also working with some partner clubs out there, including LA Galaxy, Orange County. Uh, some partner clubs getting those guys on the app, uh, filming their, their players doing the sessions and getting them on, on the app and that completely uh, uh, individualized app. Also really proud to uh, welcome Elk Grove Soccer, uh, another club partner. Into the, into the club partnership, uh, utilizing the My Personal Football Coach app and uh, the uh, Coaches Pass resource for their players and their coaches. So really proud that the club partnership's growing. We've got clubs uh, signing up all the time from all around the world. If you're interested in a club partnership, just drop me a line. Uh, I can set you up a demo session so you can see, uh, see, what, see what the, uh, the club partnership can, can do for your club. But as I said, lots going on, really looking forward to it. Got a busy, busy summer ahead. I'm working individually with lots of pros, literally from all the clubs, some of the top clubs in Europe. So looking forward to that. And then uh, uh, got a conference in Houston in August, which I'm presenting at, which uh, I'm really excited about alongside uh, people, including uh, Kieran Smith from Play Positionally. Uh, so really looking forward to that. And then a trip back to Asia in September. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into the show. So, Marco Sindrich, welcome to the show. Hi, 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 everybody. Uh, can you just give us a little bit of a background about your, your coaching and playing experience up to this point? So just briefly, what you've done in your playing career and your coaching career, and then we'll go into a little bit more detail. Yeah, I was, I was starting in Enka Zagreb as a nine-year-old, and uh, when I was 14, I was going to Dinamo Zagreb. I was played uh, there till I was uh, 19, and I was playing for national team from uh, under 14 to under 19. And after that, uh, I play in the first uh, grade of football in Croatia, second and third. And uh, when I was 27, I was starting to my coaching career in Dinamo Zagreb and uh, from that time till now I'm, I was, I, I'm there. And, and so what's, six, what's, what's your current role at Dynamo? What? What's your current job at Dynamo Zagreb? I'm a coach uh, of under 9 team. Okay. And, and assistant coach in yeah. under 11 team. Okay, so you work with the under 9s and under 11s. Great. So can you give us a little bit of um, an idea? What's, what's the, the methodology of Dynamo Zagreb? So in the, in that in that younger age, uh, we search for players. Uh, with the the coach are scouts, and we going on the tournaments. Uh, we are we playing or we are don't playing, and uh, try to search players. Of course, we we try to search uh, fast players, uh, 
smart players and something like that. But uh, in our school, uh, we work on uh, on uh, like one on one uh, stuff. Uh, uh, some a little bit of tactics in that uh, younger age, but we we want to our players, every player in our team to uh, that can play one on one. Uh, passing abilities, receiving abilities, so technical stuff, one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, some 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 tactical some tactical stuff. And Dynamo Zagreb is consistently uh, in the top of the league tables of producing uh, professional footballers for the top leagues in Europe. What, why do you think that is? What's the secret? First secret is we have talented players, very talented players. So it's our, uh, it's in Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia. We have very, very good players, and when we find them at early age, we uh, work with them on the things that we we think that is uh, most important. So, like I said, uh, talent uh, plus uh, hard work. On the in a way that we uh, think that is good, and uh, I think without the talent, you 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 cannot do uh, uh, very good very good in football. Uh, and so let's just let's just think about then. Uh, tell us a little bit about how how the club is organised at the age at those the youngest age groups. What age do you start recruiting players? What's the youngest age group you have there? Under seven. Under seven. Uh, under seven. We recruit, uh, we recruit them, but they don't have a championship. We assemble the team one year before championship. So under eight players that start the championship uh, in in two months, they train with us uh, one year, and we collect them on tournaments and uh, preparing them to for the championship. And so, for instance, the under sevens, what sort of stuff will they do? Will they be the same as the under nines? What they do? Uh, similar stuff, but of course it's uh, it's uh, easier. Uh, passing, receiving, one on one, uh, two on one, three on two, okay. and stuff like. That. So just so, um, so you talked about a little bit about one v one there. Obviously, it's a big passion of mine. What, why is one v one such a key part of the methodology there, and why is it important? So uh, we want that every other our player uh, is good on one on one because if you are good one on one you can uh, you can do some uh, uh, number uh, change in uh, in a squad. So I think that uh, if if uh, you have lots of players that good on one on one, uh, the other team tactics uh, cannot work against you. So uh, that is the hardest thing in football. Be good one on one, but uh, when when you are good, it's very hard on the opposite team. Yeah, since when I was there recently, when I visited and watched you guys, I saw one v one drills or practices in every age group, from the nines all the way up to the B team, the reserve team. Um, so that obviously is a real key part of the methodology and and the culture there at Dynamo Zagreb, right? Yes, everybody. Everybody thinks that, and we're working on that. So you can you can be uh, good one on one to passing something, pass some players, but you can also create space for you for passing, for uh, shooting on the goal. So uh, we think that that is very important, like receiving and and passing the ball also. So tell us a little bit about then your one v one. How you organize that? How do you coach one effective one v one? First, first thing we uh, we have five or six uh, dribblings, feints that we're working on. And we told the kids, we were working on the, I don't know, six feints. But you don't need to know every, uh, you don't use uh, six feints. If you have player uh, that uh, have two good feints, he's very good player. So we're working on a five or six feints and uh, in, in the start of the training, uh, we're doing that uh, uh, every every feint, uh, lots of time, you know. Uh, and after that, we are going one on one uh, with opponents, and uh, we're doing that two two times a week. So and so, how many how many days a week does the under nines train? Four times. 
four times and so then so you you do 1v1 practices twice a week out of that four times yes but, uh, but uh, i try to uh, assemble in in that training uh, also passing you can do one on one uh, but in a like circular you know like uh, we have passing the ball receiving the ball and we are doing one on one without opponent you know that uh, so yeah. if you are doing just one on one two weeks two times a week it's uh, um, uh, it's not good uh, we don't have a good uh, amount of time of, for doing uh, passing and receiving so one training is only one on one paints and one on one and other training is one on one with passing and receiving so, so give us an idea then what your typical under nine session will look like at Dynamo Zagreb. Uh, so I start the session with some games, you know, uh, with ball, without the ball, five or ten minutes uh, with games. And after that, we are uh, immediately go uh, and do some feints on the cones. Feints, receiving the ball, passing the ball. And uh, we are doing that... Uh, uh, probably 20 minutes and after that we are doing three three groups uh, of different uh, different uh, different uh, uh, drills of one on one and we are doing that two times so every player we go on the every 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 station two times this every station is different some station we have a uh, visual signs some station is uh, fasting uh, how much you are good in fast reactions and uh, some sometimes uh, you must you must uh, go with uh, receiving the ball and then after go one on one so every station is different we are doing every station two times and after that we are going on the, we have playing football for uh, for 20 minutes uh, one goal is one point, and every every uh, successful uh, dribbling one on one is one point, and that is one and a half hour. And so then, so, that's, so you, do, you do four of the sessions like that. And so then, tell us a little bit then about um, the curriculum at Dynamo. How do you work? I mean, I know obviously I spoke to you guys before. You have a a, a very large um, bank of different technical areas that you want the players to cover before they reach the end of the foundation phase, the younger age groups. I think, is it 105 different technical areas or something like that? Yes, yes. Uh, lots of uh, passing, lots of receiving, lots of feints, lots of shooting the ball. So uh, we're trying so, to... So that's, sorry, Marcus. Yeah. So these are 105 different technical areas. So like say, different shots, different passes, different different uh different 1v1 skills so there's a so so where so you have this library somewhere of 105 different techniques that you look at do you yes yes every coach have that and we are trying in one season uh cover maybe maybe 20 30 of uh, that uh, of that uh, stuff because you you cannot uh, have a amount of uh, repeating if you are doing all of that and because, I mean, that, that's, that's quite unique, I think, in terms of that's, that's very detailed. Obviously, that's the experience I've had when I've been to Dynamo is that your attention to detail, that technical detail, which maybe separates you from other academies. Uh, how do you manage that in terms of your planning? I mean, what's your planning process like when you're working with the boys? My planning is for the season is uh, doing, like I said earlier, I have maybe 20, 20 drills uh 20 drills from the uh, curriculum uh on which i am trying to do so main thing is like i say feints passing receiving so uh with u9 i i try to do that a lot and that is my main focus uh, of course uh, we are doing uh, two on one three on two but uh, the the half of every session is receiving passing or feints and we are trying to do as much as we can uh, of repeatings, you know, because they, they are very talented kids, but uh, not all of them. Uh, we have maybe in, in my team, I have uh, 12, 12 kids. Uh, eight of them uh, are very talented. And maybe with them, I don't have to do uh, such as, as uh, 
passing and receiving such as, as much, you know. But I have four or five other guys. They are not talented as them, but they are fast. I don't know, fast, very, very intelligent or something like that. And I need to do that because of them. They are not uh, all the same. So I, I try to to do that as much as I can. So the amount of repeat, repeating, repeatings are most important things. In terms of that, you talked about different abilities in your age in the in the, in the team. Where do you where do you pitch your session? Where do you focus your session? Do you focus it at the middle of the group, at the top of the group, or at the bottom of the group? How do you manage that? Those different abilities the in the age the, group. At the top of the group. Yeah. If so I tell- have, uh, like I said, eight players can do, and four uh, have struggles. I will do that drill because of these eight players. You know. Yeah. But, but then, if okay. eight players cannot do that, I I I must uh, I must uh, do some easier stuff. But I trying to do some new stuff, and I'm always progressing till the till the uh, till the time that I I can show that they cannot do that. I go down. You know. Sometimes in the book said uh, you 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 cannot do that because they are uh, too young but i try some new stuff and uh, if i can do with them i will do that but if you need to try to to see interesting so tell us in those four sessions are there are there different themes for each night or is it just four sessions and then you cover those same areas each session or is it different different topics for different nights Sometimes I'm I'm doing only uh, uh, shooting the ball with the uh, middle of the foot, you know? Yeah. And I'm doing that all the session. I'm starting with uh, the wall, then uh, one one guy uh, have the ball and one kicking the ball just to, for the technical stuff. And uh, so maybe half, uh, one hour of kicking the ball with, uh, no, about uh, 45 minutes with kicking the ball with uh, 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 middle of the foot. Uh, if I'm doing only only one on one and passing and receiving, but my that's my focus. But if I'm doing that only with uh, with U uh, nine, uh, they will they will be bored, you know. And sometimes I mixed that with something else. I can do one on one, and you must shoot uh, the ball with uh, with middle of the foot. So I mix stuff like that. To be in, uh, so they uh, will be interesting in training. And so you have the freedom to structure your four days of training as you wish. There's no what yeah. I mean is in the curriculum doesn't say what day one this must be this two three like this. Oh, no, that's that's the freedom uh, of the coach. The co- you are coach and you can do uh, you you can do all the all week. Uh, I don't know passing and receiving. But uh, of course, uh, we know what what they need, so we are not doing only that. I have training with when I am doing uh, only uh, possession of the ball. You know, if I I don't want uh, one training is uh, passing and receiving, and the other day I will do that the same thing, but I will do the possession of the ball. I will start with three on one, four on two, and then maybe. Three on three with three jokers, you know. Yeah. And I cover the, that session, and I can say I have a passing or receiving, but not in a, some circular, you know. It's act, uh, it's uh, active all the time. And and so tell us a little bit about game day. Uh, do, how do you prepare? Do you prepare for the game in the session? Are you working towards the game, or is it just another day, another game? Uh, in the in the finish of the of the session, I play 20 minutes every session, two times ten, and I'm I'm stopping, not lot of lots of time, but I'm when they are playing, it's for me it's the easier to to learn some some easier tactical stuff. So I every session is preparing for the game. So 20 minutes. We have to play 2025 to play a, a game, scrimmage, and I I'm trying to stop them and uh, explain them. Of course, not too much because uh, they, they they want to play. 
if I'm stopping too much, they are not satisfied and uh, it's it's not good for the team or or, or, or me. So every session I, I'm doing some easier tactical stuff. Uh, and uh, of course, if you have talented kids, you can do that and you can progress very fast. Okay. And they are intelligent and they can accept that. Of course, that that is the the feeling of the coach. How how much further you will, you will go? Uh, so every session I'm working on a, on a game plan. Uh, so they they have uh, lots of repetitions again, and uh, they can learn faster. So give us an idea then of those tactical elements of you might you might teach an under nine. It's it's some easier stuff. I start with uh, spreading the when you have the ball, you have to spread out. You have to be on your position. Uh, you have to watch the ball all the time. Uh, when we're doing the build up, uh, we have we have two or three uh, actions that we are doing. How to how to uh, how to play uh, from for the goalkeeper. So I have a center midfielder, and uh, when we have the ball, I'm trying that. Uh, he uh, became midfielder or uh, uh, right or left back, and uh, I, I don't go further because that is that is good enough for them. And when they are accept that, uh, I can do some things that we play uh, maybe uh, other other uh, formation. You know, I have two formations, and uh, because so what, what's formation? Tell us your formations, Marco. Three one two, and uh, and the alternative is two uh, two one uh, three. Okay. Two three one or two one three. It's it's similar. So I'm I'm trying that they understand uh, the the space, uh, the timing, and they can do that. But uh, uh, in the first maybe six months, it's very hard for them. After that, they are they are learned that, and that's then then it's easier for them to to play. They they don't need to run too much uh, when they have the ball. They just need to be on their position, and uh, maybe if some 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 player leave his position, you must go on the, uh, him position. So uh, they are under nine, but they are talented and they can do that. So then, and also, you know, sticking with game day, tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how you set the boys up. I mean, in terms of winning and performance, what's the priorities for the under nines? Priorities are are always performance, always. So we are, we, we are playing now uh, on small fields and it's very hard uh, for them to to play on the on the, on the small fields, but they must play football like we train football. So uh, what what I mean? I mean that you cannot kick the ball uh, from goalkeeper. We must play. We have build up, and we must play every possession. I don't care. It's uh, zero three zero five five zero. They must uh, trying trying to play. So that stuff that we are doing on uh, on uh, training sessions, uh, we are trying to do uh, on every game. Uh, and I uh, I don't care if we are. I like to win, and I told them, but uh, we are we need to win uh, on the way that we are training. If we are winning just because we are uh, talent talented, uh, we are not doing a good job. So every every session, every every game is different because we have uh, in our championship smaller and bigger fields. When we are playing or our bigger field, it's easier for us. It's easier. Uh, uh, but when we are playing on the small fields, it's very hard for that kid because they are they are nine year year old and they need to play uh, on the ground. Uh, they need to think. They need to doing some feints. They need to be brave because they they, they play in front of their goal. Uh, but uh, that is my main focus. They need to play football, learn how to play, and we and when we are winning and playing like that, that's that's good job. If we are just winning, we can win every game. We can do because we have the be, uh, the best kids in Zagreb. 
But if you are winning and not doing stuff uh, that we are doing on a uh, training session, uh, that's not good for the development of players. Uh, and what about substitutes? If you have you're playing seven aside, how many substitutes do you take each game? Uh, I have uh, I have four substitutes. And then, so how do you manage playing time? Does everyone play an equal time, or I mean, how does everyone play a certain uh, amount of time? Sometimes, sometimes they play equal. Uh, but sometimes not. Uh, if you are, I told to parents and uh, players before the before the season, and uh, uh, when we have when we have good game, when we have a hard game against very good opponent, uh, the kids uh, that are uh, being good on the training sessions, that are being good on the games. I give them, uh, I give them a little bit, uh, little bit uh, uh, like advance uh, in front of the other kids, but they can, they they understand that because not uh, every kid is on the same level. So we have maybe 10 games in a season like that, but we have 60 or 70, 60 games that everybody play the same, you know. So how many games do you play a season? Uh, in uh, in our championship, uh, we have uh, thirty four games. Yeah. And uh, on the tournaments, maybe forty. Wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of games. Lots of games. Yeah, lots of games. So they are playing uh, uh, lots of amount of time. And so how many players do you have in the under nine squad? I have tw- uh, ten players and two goalkeepers. Ten players and two goalkeepers. So then you're not, you don't have to leave any players out of the playing squad then when you play matches. No, 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 no. I, I might all of them, and uh, next year we will be, we'll be playing uh, eight plus one, okay. and uh, we will, we will bring maybe four players, and that's enough. So they play nine aside at under tens. Under ten, play eight plus one. Yeah, nine aside. Wow. Okay. So um, just um, and think about much gone. bigger field, yeah. much bigger field than uh, other for some something else. You know, now we play six plus one uh, on the field where uh, what is forty five meters and uh, maybe uh, twenty five thirty uh, like wide. So it's very small. But when we are playing eight plus one, it's half of a big field. Um, and what age group do they start? Eleven v eleven. Uh, under twelve. Under twelve. Interesting. So just going back into the tournament, uh, how do you approach a tournament then in terms of winning and performance? The same thing. So this, you don't... This, the okay. same thing. Same thing. So we are here. I, I told them every every time. We are here to to learn something, to develop. To be better than yesterday. We are not here to win. We want to win, of course, but we have some tasks for them, uh, what they are need to do. Uh, and uh, if we are winning without with, without progression, uh, it's it's not good for for the kids, for me, for the club, for no one. So I try to I try to, to, uh, to tell them every time that we are here to to make some progress. And uh, of course, we are trying to win. But if you are kicking the ball from the goalkeeper all the time and you are winning, why are we training then? You know? So uh, the same thing. Every game, friendly game, championship game, tournament game, the same thing. And you mentioned it earlier about ball mastery. I mean, I've been to... You're, you're there you too with Dynamo as well. You see the same at Ajax, you know, these, these top academies all have a culture of ball mastery why is that so important because if you are if you if the football is playing with the ball and uh, if you you cannot do everything uh, fast with left or right foot uh, you cannot uh, you cannot uh, play modern football so technical stuff are good but before that is technical, uh, tactical stuff is good. But before that is technical stuff. Uh, before the speed, before the strength, you can be fast. 
But if you c- cannot receive the ball uh, on the right side with right leg uh, or left leg uh, and uh, play with two touch and uh, passing the ball uh, hard and uh, and pre- precision, uh, you you can you. You you can have a great uh, the best tactical coach, but are, if technical uh, players are not there, you cannot play football. Not more than football, every football. So uh, for me, the first thing is technical stuff, and after that we can we can we can do on on, on the tactical stuff and something like that. And if you are here, if you have fast player uh, and uh, very good uh, with the ball then, of course, everybody can be a good coach after that. Uh, and what do you think about the, the, the critics who might say that doing anything outside of the game uh, isn't as worthwhile or working unopposed, working with just the ball is not that beneficial? Uh, I, I think that football is not only one thinking, you know. Uh, there is uh, uh, many different ways how you how you can de- develop the player. So the one way uh, they they cannot be one way, you know. Uh, if you have if you have some uh, some program, and you're working on that uh, ten years in your school, you will have results. But every coach need to work on that program. So if you are if you are doing like Barcelona, I was in Barcelona uh, one year ago, and I was trying, I was looking the the sessions. Okay, they are doing only possessions, 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 possessions. One hour, three times a week, and then play the game. Uh, and uh, if every coach doing that for ten years, they will have they will have results. You know. But I think that most important is thing is thing is a program and a follow that program. It's not only one way. But, uh, I mean, talk, talk, think about your own experience uh, as you know a professional footballer and coming up. How important was working your te- on your technique away from the game with the ball? Uh, what what uh, again? Sorry. So I mean, you know, yourself, you played at Dynamo Zagreb. You know, you played in the national teams. How important was it for yourself to train with the ball away from the game? Uh, very important, but that will be uh, very important. But uh, that very depends on the coach. The coach must have feeling, uh, feeling for the time, for the space. The coach must understand it that bec- uh, because. Uh, and must know uh, what the, uh, he wants from his players. If you are no, not good with, without the ball, uh, you will running. Uh, I, I always t- t- told my players, uh, if you are if you are running, uh, if you are tired all the time and you're running too much, so that means that you are on the wrong place every time. So you don't need to uh, uh, run uh, 15, uh, 15 uh, kilometers a game. You need to run smart. So I think that is very, very important. From the younger age, from the uh, under seven, from to the uh, under under nineteen. If you are doing on that, the players will, when uh, after they will uh, go out from the academy, they will be they will be, they will be know how to play in uh, four three three four two uh, three one in every in every uh, formation because. They will learn that in academy. So, uh, how is, it's important to to be uh, very good with the ball. It's it's very important uh, what are you doing without the ball. And we, we've seen uh, in in many, all different sports all around the world there is um, an age bias. So, for instance, for instance, in England, if you're born for the beginning of the year, in the first quarter of the year, you have much more opportunities in sport. And, and to be maybe more successful in in, uh, in football. Do you have any strategies at Dynamo Zagreb to combat this, the relative age effect? So players born at the beginning of the year may be more advanced than players born towards the end of the year. Uh, we don't have that, but uh, we are trying to develop some program for that kids that are maybe from eight months to 12 months. Uh, we are talking about that. 
and we are we have focus on uh, on uh, uh, date of birth, uh, and we are, we are we are trying to develop some program, but it's not easy because uh, we have some changings in our in our uh, academy, uh, and we are we have one guy that uh, was trying to do stuff like that. But he he was uh, he he's gone, uh, and now we are waiting for uh, some other guy that will be a uh, boss of the company. We will do something uh, stuff stuff like that because yeah we think that uh, that kids that were born in a, uh, late in a, in a year are different of course, and uh, we need to uh, give them a a, a chance. Uh, and what about players maybe who are physically uh, at an advantage or disadvantage? So maybe you have a player who is, you know, two or three years more developed in terms of body or the player who may be similar to Modric, who's a bit smaller, a bit slighter. How do you support or challenge these players? Uh, we, we recognise that. So if he, if he, is, uh, if he uh, is good on uh, uh, thinking about the game, uh, he's, if he is uh, intelligent, uh, if he is good technical, but he is small, uh, we 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 see that and we are give uh, players like that a chance, of course, because we know what he can be. So we like players like that, and uh, uh, in in our academy, players like that have a, a very 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 good chance to to make it. Okay, and what about the player, the big player, the one who's maybe bigger than everyone else, has physically a big advantage? How do you challenge that player? Uh, we, uh, of course, it's here now. Uh, when you are bigger and stronger, uh, you are uh, you have advantage, and uh, coach recognize that, and uh, he play, he play. But if we if we if, uh, if we uh, need to choose uh, between that smaller guy and that bigger guy who is not talented so much, uh, we always choose that smaller guy. It's interesting because I, I mentioned this to you when I was there visiting last time um, about maybe when I look at the squads at Dynamo, they're maybe not as physically developed as squads maybe in uh, in particularly in England and in many other parts of Europe. So is there less emphasis on physicality when recruiting? Uh, no, we are, we are not, uh, we are, we start maybe five years ago, 10, on uh, that physical, physical trainings and stuff, stuff like that. We, uh, we are not, uh, maybe 10 years ago, uh, when I was playing uh, there, uh, we we don't uh, use the gym on something like that, but now we start to use that, and uh, we know that that's very important. So uh, our kids are 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 now uh, that is new for them, but uh, we have physical coaches and uh, last maybe last ten years, and we are doing on that. But in our area, the, the we have lots of smaller kids that are very good, so. Of course, uh, we pick them because uh, we think that uh, it's uh, you don't have to be a big to play uh, good football. Well, I mean, here, like maybe in England, still there's a, a an emphasis maybe on the big, big, quicker yeah. player, yeah. and maybe is that not the same? Croatia maybe have different priorities when selecting the children. Yes, I I think so. I think so. Yeah, we are uh, similar like maybe Spain and uh, and uh, Portuguese and something like that. So what's, what are you looking for then? The clever player, the, the game intelligence is the most important thing? Yeah, for me, yeah, and for the academy. Uh, speed, speed, of course, uh, and uh, uh, intelligent uh, players. So uh, and then you can work on uh, technical stuff with them. Of course, if he is talented and he, he has speed and he is intelligent, uh, you, you, but that... Uh, Maybe one or two in a, in a, in a generation are, are like that, you know. Other other kids are uh, maybe intelligent and uh, fast, or fast and but lost, uh, very bad with the ball. So you must work on on receiving, passing, and stuff like that. Interesting. So then, uh, 
another question here because I've actually a lot of the people, the listeners, gave in some questions for this uh, podcast. So here's another good one: How do you, uh, and how do you, and how regularly do you feed back to parents about the progress of players? Uh, bearing in mind, there's always a possibility of them being released from the academy. Uh, so we have we have a psychologist. Uh, I will I will go with on on that way. We have a psychologist, and we talk about talk with parents uh, all the time, from uh, under seven, under eight, n- under nine, under ten, uh, and eleven. We talk much with parents, so they are uh, we we preparing them for what maybe will be happening. So uh, we talk about, we think that this, the parents are very, very important in that younger age and we need to have contact with them. Because if I'm talking with kids on one way and the parents talking on some other way, uh, the kid will be, uh, the kid will not be uh, doing some progress like we want, you know. And uh, we preparing the parents for maybe that that will be uh, that uh, his kid maybe go out from the club, uh, and they know that they are in Dinamo Zagreb, and everybody wants to be in Dinamo Zagreb uh, in Croatia. So uh, they they are, we prepare them, for them, and also kids. But it's not it's not easy, you know. Everybody wants to be in that club. It's not easy, but sometimes we need to tell uh, parents and the kid that uh, he, that it's not good for them to be here anymore because uh, he will not play so much like in other club. And uh, of course, it's not uh, only Dynamo that you can make it. You can make it from some other club. And do, I mean, do you have a cert, Do you have a specific? Um, time of year that you, you you have official meetings with parents or just the end of the year or is it just informal chats? I have uh, we have meetings uh, three times a year yeah uh, and uh, three or four times uh, with psychologists and then if so for instance if you identify a player who maybe is having who's not uh, who's maybe not um, dealing with the environment uh, how do you approach that? Do you give the parents and the player warning? Do you have give them things they need to improve before they're going to get released? Uh, uh, we try to we try to talk and uh, work on that be- before the warning. You know, if some kid uh, doing some stuff that we don't like or parent, uh, we have first meeting on a, on a beginning of the season. We have rules for the kids and for the parents. And we gave them that rules. And uh, if someone uh, don't listen, of course we talk with them one on one and uh, have a have a warning. But we don't have problems like that because they 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 know that uh, if we if they are doing some problems that we are going to move them. So we don't have problems like that because we talk b- before the season and they know their rules. Uh, they they are not allowed to watch the practice. On the, when we are have uh, games, they uh, only need to cheer for the their kids uh, and stuff like that. But they 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 know what what uh, they need to do. And so so you you're assistant coach of the 11s as well. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. What what's the what's the difference in approach between a nine year old and eleven year old? Uh, you can do some uh, harder drills. You can do some uh, harder uh, tactical stuff, but uh, the drills are similar. The mindset are similar. You know, lots of one-on-one, lots of possession, lots of passing, receiving, and stuff like that. So the same thing, the same thing, but uh, maybe, of course, because they are older, harder and uh, and. Uh, more, much more repetitions and so but when does that same, what, same thing. What, what, what what so when does that change and so if, for instance the, the under 12s or 13s what are they doing that's maybe different to to the younger ones uh it's it's the only difference the different thing is uh like that progression in in uh, like uh, how can i say it's harder harder drills you know we are doing the same thing but 
when they are starting to get older, it's harder, 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 harder. So uh, the tactical stuff, it's much bigger. After uh, maybe uh, under 12, under 13, we are doing some some uh, bigger st- tactical stuff. But the drills are similar, very similar. Possession, passing, receiving, one on one. And what Let's, age? And what age does it begin to uh, winning begin to become more important? Under 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 fourteen and above. And so then, which, ha- yeah, come. Yeah. Yeah, we <laughs> try to to. Of course, when they are younger, we talk about uh, winning with them. We tell them, of course, we want to win, but on the way that we are training, you know. And after that, uh, they are in, in them. Everybody wants to win, so you don't you don't need to tell them too much when they are older. They want to win. They are built for that, you know. So our 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 uh, main goal is uh, make them uh, know how to play with right or left foot foot uh, foot. How to how to be good on one on one. And uh, thinking about football and uh, some some other other formation, uh, so be intelligent in that in that tactical stuff. And so you you work with the nines and then the assistant elevens. I noticed that all coaches work with two teams, don't they, within the academy or a lot of the coaches? Why is that? Uh, because we want to be connected, you know. So uh, every we try to to as much as possible to coaches to be connected on the field, you know, and uh, maybe changing some uh, experience and talk about football. And I think that that is very good because we have very, very good atmosphere in club uh, because I work now in six years. I work with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, six coaches, uh, you know. Yeah. And. Every other coach work with six other coach, and we are all connected. And I know how that coach think, and he knows how I think, and that is very good for the academy. And what about yourself? Do you have aspirations of working with older players? Maybe going to work with the first team? Uh, yes, yes. I would try to. Uh, uh, my my goal is uh, to go on the bigger field, on the big field, and. Uh, that is the first goal, and then we're going to see. Of course, I everybody want to be uh, a coach of the first team. That is that's something that uh, that you like and want. But uh, my my first goal now is uh, be coach uh, of U12 or above uh, because of that big field. And, and that then- is. And then, what 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 do you do yourself to to keep fresh? To, to how do you develop yourself as a coach? Uh, we have academy. I go on academy and try to to, to finish my license. Uh, and uh, every day, try to, to something uh, find something new on the internet or something. Some reading the books all the time. You need to do that because you never know when the when the. Uh, when you have, uh, when you will uh, have the the team, and uh, you, when you when you got the team, you must be ready. So I try to I try to uh, learn, like I will get uh, uh, maybe under 16 in in a half year, you know. And I I try to learn every day. So if that opportunity comes, that I'm going to be ready. And and it's quite. It's a it's a it's a quite of interesting um, play. The environment, the academy, it's literally in the shadows of the stadium there uh, in Zagreb. How important do you think that is for players? You know, literally training next to the stadium, being able to see that that you know that that's where the end goal is, if you like. Yeah, you, you can imagine how how they look on that field. Everybody wish that they will play on the on that field. It's it's very important. They can imagine uh, themselves uh, playing there, and we can talk with them about that and uh, trying to, to explain them without the effort. You cannot play on that field, you know. It's only tw- uh, 22 players in uh, can uh, finish there, so uh, you must you must work hard every every session. 
if you want to work on that field. And of course, they 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 understand that because they they have <laughs> one goal, and that is play for the first team. And it's interesting, you know, because I've, I've visited you guys a few times and I've, I've been around the world uh, visiting academies. And maybe, you know, for instance, the, the the drills you use maybe aren't so unique, but it's something about the culture there in terms of, you know, running right through the club from the under sevens all the way through to the first team. You know, everyone's on the same page. The culture is developing technical players. How important is that? And, and how do you ensure all the coaches are on the same page? Uh, we talk about that maybe two two uh, two questions uh, earlier. Um, we work all together. You know, every 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 season, you are working with other team and other coach. So now, uh, I work with half of the maybe half of the coach that are head coach in academy, and uh, we are trying to we f- we play football together. We play basketball together. Uh, we have uh, meetings, so um, we think similar, you know. Uh, and uh, the guy that uh, uh, arrange all that uh, know what he want, and he pick the coach that he will be on the same page with me, or maybe coach of the B team, you know. We are we thinking similar. So if you and me thinking similar about football, we'll be good friends, you know. <laughs> Yeah. But if you don't like football, or you like uh, football when you are kicking the ball from the goalkeeper all the time, and you like big, big players, and I like uh, small players and play football on the on the field, you know, uh, we will we will be not friends, you know. So uh, we think uh, we have similar thinking about football, and uh, we uh, spending a lots of time together, lots of time. So and- every season we have. Uh, Another another coach that you, you are working with, and in, in your opinion, in, in um, here's another great question from one of the listeners: uh, players that you have seen progress successfully through the system from under nine, or players that have gone right through the academy. Do you think there's uh, any similarity in their personality traits or their their character traits? Can you repeat? So what I mean to so players that go through the academy from under nine all the way to the first team. Do you think there's something you can say that they have similarities? There's uh, similarities in terms of their character, or they have certain similar traits. Similar, uh, of course. Similar. So, so, what what would those be? Do you think? Uh, if you if you are from under nine to to first team, uh, you, so that means that you pick up from every coach. You pick something, and uh, without uh, without. Uh, your own character and without your own will and uh, desire, we cannot do anything. So uh, I think that I understand the question. I'm not sure. Uh, like Luka Modric, I don't know. Yeah, tell us, about Luka, tell us about Luka because, I mean, you, you, you played with Luka, right, when the academy, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, he came with uh, when he was under under 15. Uh, and uh, his, his character was very strong very 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 different from all of us because he came from the small space uh small place uh and uh, he he know that uh, that dynamo is his only chance you know yeah so uh, that's similar like i go to the barcelona uh, and I, I know that i have only one chance in barcelona and he behave like that and for us for us is dynamo is is Great club, of course, but we are used to that, you know, because I'm from Zagreb, and I'm I'm here in Dinamo, and uh, I used to that. Uh, but he 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 is he have a different mindset. So he's a hungry, uh, hungry for the success. Hungry, hungry every session, like crazy, you know. So uh, we are all. Uh, I think that that is his uh, biggest. Biggest plus, you know, biggest, uh, biggest uh, uh, quality, his do mindset. You, do you think you can train that mindset, develop that mindset, or is that just a natural thing uh, some guys have? You can, you can, but uh, you have boundaries, of course. You cannot go maybe uh, like uh, to the, like Luka Modric, you know. You, the, you, some stuff are, uh, you are born with them, and uh, from your, some, 
with some stuff you are born, some stuff add uh, your parents, and we can add some stuff. But uh, you have boundaries with that, you know. Uh, he have in he have that in 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 the in him, you know. So um, uh, we can coaches are very important in in players players lives, and uh, coaches and parents and uh, you can do a lots of in uh, improving of that character, lots of lots of. And I think in our that. Uh, uh, that is, of course, that is important, like passing and receiving for me, because I know how how I was, and why I'm not making a career. And uh, if you don't have a mindset, uh, you can be fast, you can be intelligent, you can do everything with a ball. You will not make it, because that is hard work, hard work. If everybody can play uh, two good games uh, uh, in ten games. But it's hard to play eight good games in ten games, you know. And Luca is a master of that. He's master of of, of uh, uh, trainings. He 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 only want to play football, nothing else, you know. And that mindset is everything. And now, of course, he's he's there where he need to be. Uh, and what would your strategy be for coaching some children, uh, young children from a, maybe a culture that doesn't have a footballing, uh, you know, culture or tradition in, you know, like you do in Croatia? So, for instance, you went to America and coaching those children. What's your, what would you be your strategy? The strategy is uh, doing stuff that will uh, make them love football, you know. So that is that is the quality of the coach. Uh, you need to figure out... Uh, what are you going to do to make them love football? Make them love that game. So if uh, everybody wants to compete, competing, you know, every every kid, they uh, who who doing the 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 best pressing on the on the world? Kids when they are playing on the field, <laughs> they are always always in pressing, you know. Mm. So if uh, I, I if I am coach in an environment like that. Every every session is competing, competing, competing against each other. Every session, because kids like that. Kids like to win. Kids like to competing against each other, and uh, that it, that will be my main goal. And what about if you're a coach in a grassroots uh, environment in a local club, and how do you balance that winning and performance? I mean, it's it's easier in an academy because. Your priorities, yeah. maybe, but if you're in a local club, how do you balance that with the parents and the children? And uh, I mean, what, what would your advice be for young coaches in that environment? Advice, advice is hard for them because uh, they they need to develop a kid, working on develop. But if they are working only on develop, they will not have uh, any any good results. So that is that must be a program. The same thing, you must need to talk with parents and explain them, okay, what we want from them. We want that, 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 and that. And they need to understand that. If we are want only winning, okay, we will training like that. We will kick in the ball all the time. So don't expect to your, your kid to be good at passing and receiving the ball. Don't talk to me like that, you know? So if you want only result, we will have a result, but we don't play good football. If we if we have if we want develop kids, so you don't need to uh, watch uh, results. You need to be patient, and only watch what you your kids are doing on the field. So I will I will give uh, every 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 session every game I will I will give uh, uh, some test for uh, players, and uh, I will tell that uh, to parents. You know. So the parent need to watch uh, what what is the task of the of the of, he, of, the, of the players and uh, so if if that kid is not good on receiving the ball, you must watch only how he receiving the ball. That is your only goal for the parents. If, if, and if your kid receiving the ball good, that is the good game for your kid. Don't watch the, uh, how many score, how many goals he scored or assist. You know, 
something like that. Uh, focus on details, details. And what advice would you give to a young aspiring coach who wants to develop and maybe wants to work at a top academy like you? Uh, first, you need to be prepared to work hard. You need to have your own thinking about football, your own. So you need to know what players you like, what uh, football you like. You need to know that. Don't learn from others about that, you know. You can you can listen other coaches, but you have you must have something from yourself, you know. And don't be don't try to be Jurgen Klopp or uh, Pep Guardiola. Don't try to be like them. You are you can you must be yourself, and you must have your own thinking about football. Of course, you will talk about football with other coaches, but if you don't have your uh, starting position. I said like that, you know, you you cannot be a good coach. You must have something from yourself. You must have that starting position and then maybe pick up something from you, from uh, Klopp, from uh, Guardiola, and I don't know. But if you if you have 10% from you, yourself and you are trying to pick up 90% from others, you, you cannot be a good coach. And what about some advice for a young aspiring player? Young is be prepared to work hard, believe in yourself. Like that is that's that's everybody talking about. But uh, they need to know that uh, that that is a long road, not sprint on the hundred meters. It's marathon, and you need to prepare yourself to to fail. And raise a uh, and uh, rise up and fail and rise up and fail and rise. Everybody think that Luka Modric did not play a bad game. Yeah, he had a bad game, but after that bad game, he come on, on Monday on the field and play like crazy. But he, if if you if you are expecting to always to play a good game, you will be very disappointing. Uh, only thing that you need to do is get effort, effort every time you when you are on field, effort, 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 and work to be better. What stuff that you are not good. And finally, what about advice for a parent who has a young, um, talented footballer in their family? Don't talk about football with your kids. <laughs> no, yeah. don't talk, because kids don't need two coaches. He need coach. And that, and if you have a bad game, do I, I told my parents that if your kid have a bad game, he know that he have a bad game. He don't need to hear from you. He can hear from me, but from you, he need a hug. You know, he need a friend. He need a father. He don't need two coaches. So uh, uh, parents think that they can. They can uh, help them uh, improving in football. No, they need a shelter because we are we are there, coaches, to make them learn f football. You know, but when it, when the game is finished, he's just another kid that will go on the field and play uh, in the sand. You know, the football cannot be only thing in their lives. Cannot. Marco, thank you very much for your time. Uh, it's been really fantastic. Thank you for uh, for your time, and I hope to see you in uh, in academy again. Definitely, I'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in to the MyPersonalFootballCoach.com Soccer Player Development Podcast. MyPersonalFootballCoach.com's dynamic ball mastery program is the world's leading online individual technical training program, proven and developed at the highest level in the English Premier League. Sign up now to train like the pros and take your game to the next level. Master the ball, master the game.